Hi guys, this is the Mantis Elite with camera. The capture software is a uh, demo version of AMCAP, that's A-M-C-A-P. Mant uh, Vision Engineering supply a version of this. Um, the software is not fantastic, but it, uh, it does the job. It's free. Um, Mant uh, Vision Engineering also supply uh, a far more professional package, which is about 400 odd pounds. So, you know, totally over top for what I need. But um, I thought we'd just run through this uh, this software. Um, hopefully, you'll be hearing my, what I'm saying, and you'll be seeing the picture uh, that I'm recording through the Mantis Elite software. I have downloaded the updated latest version from the author's website. Uh, which uh, I've forgotten what it is now, but I'll put the links on the uh, on the YouTube video link straight out of the box, as you can probably see, especially in this area. It's the picture is just too bright. Uh, I mean, it's perfectly okay for looking at things like this ship or you know that sort of thing, but if you want to actually see the surface, like I'm seeing through the actual uh, stereo screen you, you just don't you, you what's happening is this is being overexposed and you can't see the texture of the surface of that uh, of that ball it's from a VGA that I've removed uh, now there's a number of things to bear in mind with this firstly you've got to pick the right uh, option from the devices in the software menu in this particular case uh, it is we have to select Venus USB 2 camera uh, I've gone down and also ticked the microphone from the laptop. It's an external microphone that I plug in for the YouTube videos. Uh, you would also need to go to uh, options and mess around with the various uh, still capture pin, video capture pin, video capture filter and things like that. Now I've just realized by going into these menus now that whilst this is recording I can't make any changes to the video capture filter and what I was going to do was adjust the exposure and some of the other settings just so you can see uh, the top of this come into uh, to view properly so it looks like I'm going to have to just show you parts of this board and, uh, and then go and make some changes. This latest version of the software uh, has crosshair and overlay function. The crosshair just, I actually I think I can do this live, let me just try it. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. There's a crosshair now appeared on the screen. Um, that may well be useful for aligning certain things. It's, it's an option that didn't seem to work in the supplied version from Vision, Vision Engineering. It was just blanked out all the time. One of their guys seemed to think that there was another option somewhere in the menus that would allow that to work. Uh, if there is, I couldn't find it. But when I downloaded this latest version, uh, it uh, it worked with no problems. And also there is an overlay function that would allow you to view the live image and overlay a JPEG or similar uh, that you've taken before. So you could perhaps compare um, ICs or you know anything that needs comparison with a known good part or whatever probably not entirely useful for our our business but it's nice if these things uh, work if they're available I'm just going to turn that crosshair off um, the other thing to bear in mind is that this picture at the moment is uh, I don't think I can go in and change it to see no I can't it's I think it was 640 by 480 now I can go up to uh, full HD with the laptop the software is installed on, but the frame rate drops right down to something like 5. That's completely unusable. The frame rate at the moment on this 640 by 480 is um, 30 frames a second, and that pretty much means that whatever I'm touching on the board, the image on the laptop screen mimics that almost exactly. There's the tiniest, tiniest delay, but 
it wouldn't bother you if you had to look at the screen whilst you were soldering or something you would be able to go from pin to pin without um, you know without any issue I'm actually looking at the monitor now and I can jump to from the one resistor to another without too much trouble obviously it's easier looking through the viewer and for my purposes this software is only going to be used really to record software uh, sorry videos for the forum so it's not a, a major issue the other thing to bear in mind is the image quality is very much dependent on your PC or laptop the slower the performance the lower the uh, resolution that your capture at a reasonable frame rate um, you can enlarge this to full screen but it's just all blocky and horrible if you do that so don't even bother when you click on um, maximize and um, a restore down button you know the top right next to the little white cross it will automatically go down to a size of box that gives you a decent image quality now you can click and drag that box out but you'll find on lower end computers the image will instantly become you know out of focus and pixelated so view the window in the res in the size that it gives you otherwise you're just going to be wasting your time if you've got a fantastic up to the up to the moment laptop with uh, dual or quad cores or more and lots of memory uh, then you'll get a much better picture at, uh, at higher refresh rates I'm running a Samsung uh, R610 it's a, uh, a dual core processor 4 gig of memory 3 point whatever being used as it's only a 32 bit machine um, can't remember the processor speed but it's pretty fast and this is capturing at a reasonable frame rate of 30 and the image is uh, you know it's not too bad at all I don't know what the professional software version gives you over this it's still the camera is only 1.3 megapixels which isn't much these days but if it was any higher then you're going to need an even faster PC to give you, you know, the frame rate if you want to work on anything live and look at the screen um, so yeah I guess it's a compromise between what you want to do with this for me it's recording videos probably for the forum I don't need to look at it on screen I just would like it to be very clear for you guys I can actually look at this through the, the Mantis viewing head like I'm doing now and uh, you know if I was reflowing these pins for you or trying to remove this IC you would be able to see that very clearly the, the, the IC in the picture the viewer is upright for me and uh, for you guys it's probably tilted slightly off at the top to the left and uh, I'm pretty certain this is because the camera because this is a stereo viewer that I'm looking through the camera is offset onto one of the uh, one of the channels you know that's sort of the channel what the left or right uh, and that's just making that I see tilt for you for me it's perfectly upright again not really an issue um, it's got to be offset because it's not going to work any other way but I think you can see you can see pretty clearly what I'm doing if I was working on any of this and at 30 frames a second yeah that's pretty good I can pop it up to uh, you know full HD but at 5 frames a second it's just uh, at this point this is unusable perfect for still shots and that sort of thing don't get me wrong but uh, for anything live and uh, this is the setting to go for if we ever get a, a really fast uh, computer or laptop in I'll install the software again and uh, you know see what it uh, see what it does at the moment that picture is just a bit overexposed um, but because I'm capturing video at the moment I can't adjust it as I said a minute ago um, but you can go in when you're not recording you can go in and adjust all sorts of things it's not the most intuitive software that I've ever used it's you know as soon as you make a selection you're out of that menu and you have to bring the menu back up again and make another change and then you have to go back into the menu again <laughs> so it's not brilliant but it is free uh, it's nothing to do with vision engineering it's uh, 
third party software i suspect they pay a, a royalty to include it with their uh, they include it free with their products uh, it's absolutely fine you can pay 20 pounds to the author of the software and you will then have a, a full blown version which will allow you to access more of the uh, more of the features that are not available at the moment the I think for me the weirdest thing is the, the zoom. Firstly you have to go to the window menu, then scroll down and go to zoom, and then you actually have to click on enable, which is also control plus the Z key. So you have to actually enable the zoom first of all. Then you have to go back to the same window and scroll down to uh, zoom again and select the adjust button. That brings up a pop-up window, and I don't know whether this is appearing on the film yeah I won't know that till I play it back then you have to drag that box out of the way of the image and then you've got four adjustments you've got horizontal pan and zoom and then you've got vertical pan and zoom uh, the zoom control is fully out at the moment and I'll just zoom in and you see the effect okay just sort of stretching it off <laughs> until it becomes you know, unviewable really uh, if I click, this is horizontal obviously, if I click and hold and drag the pan control it's also adjusting zoom and pan and zoom are working together but if I now move the pan control back to the left it doesn't move the zoom adjustment back, you have to manually do that so yeah, if I click on pan, drag it across Zooming in, um, yeah, Ugh. I don't know, I don't know whether there's a, a way of improving that. If I go to vertical, I'm clicking pan, it's also moving the zoom button, and we're you know, panning out, and now I've got to move the zoom control back out as well. I mean, that side of it sucks, I mean, I'm just not impressed with that. <laughs> it's free. So uh, yeah, Vision Engineering wanted me to point out that this is the free version uh, and they do a far more professional version which allows you to take you know, accurate measurements and all sorts uh, but £400 plus is um, it's certainly not uh, required for me but I'm sure other businesses you know, that's a, a, a must have. Uh, you know, there's various options within these menus that you're obviously not going to see. but. Yeah, I think that's going to be ideal for uh, forum purposes. I've just uh, used the Mantis to view the top of a chip that had had the surface all scratched off for the Mini Pro programmer. Um, don't know why they had uh, done that because you only have to moisten the top of the chip and you can read the number. Um, but yeah, this is good, perfect for forum videos. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to make uh, good use of it. For you guys, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll catch you later.